morning, church. We're so glad to have you here. I know it's rainy outside, but it is beautiful with God's love in this place. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord, amen? Would you stand as you are able, and we will begin our worship together as we proclaim what we believe by reciting together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you will, remain standing. We'll continue in worship with hymn number 102, My Hope is Built. take a moment to greet one another before we continue in worship. Let me add my word of welcome. We are so glad to see each of you here at worship today. We are, it's going to be a special day in the house of the Lord. We want to say a special word of welcome to any guests here today with us. We are so glad that you are here. We'd also like to say a special word of welcome to those watching on television and online. For those of you in the room, please help me in welcoming our TV and online audience this morning. 
Well, if this is your first time here at Fraser, we'd like to direct your attention to the back of the pew in front of you. There you will find one of these blue welcome cards. We would love for you to pick one of these up and fill it out. This is just a way for us to learn a little bit more about you and how we might better serve you as a church. Then after service, you can drop those off in the offering boxes located in the back of the worship center or out at the connection desk out in the atrium. And if you're watching online and you wish to connect, you can do so simply by texting the word connect to the number that you see on the screens. Well, next Sunday is Palm Sunday, which marks the beginning of Holy Week. We'll be celebrating Palm Sunday in both of our services with special music, and we'll hope you'll be here for that. And then our Stations of the Cross experience will open on Wednesday the 27th, and will run through Friday the 29th. And if you're not able to be at Stations of the Cross sometime during that week, it will also be open on Easter Sunday morning beginning at 7 a.m. Also on Wednesday the 27th, we'll be having a special Holy Week service where we will discuss why Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was necessary. The service will be at 6 p.m. in the East Sanctuary. And then on Friday the 29th, we'll come together for our Good Friday service at 6 p.m. right here in the Worship Center. At this service, we'll walk through Jesus' final moments, including the crucifixion and his burial. It's a very meaningful service that creates a special anticipation for Easter Sunday. And then we'll join together right here on Sunday, March 31st to celebrate Easter Sunday. Pastor Chris will be sharing a message about what the resurrection means for us as Christians. It will also be Confirmation Sunday and Baptism Sunday, and it's gonna be an incredible day of worship here at Fraser. And so we hope you will be here for as many of those events as you can be. Well, men, this Thursday, March 21st, we'll be having our men's supper in the gathering place at 6 p.m. DG Markwell will be our speaker and we'll be eating homemade gumbo. Cost us $5 at the door and we hope we see you there. And then also coming up on Friday and Saturday, April 12th and 13th, we'll be having a men's retreat called United right here at the church. Pastor Chris will be teaching and some of the men from our music ministry will be leading in worship. We'll have meals together and some great time of fellowship and some more information as well as a link to register can be found on the Fraser app. I mean, we just really wanna encourage you to be here for that as we unite together in Christ to spend time together studying God's word, worshiping together, and enjoying each other's company. Well, church, Isaiah 26, four says to trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. Would you stand with me this morning as we sing together about this truth, as we sing Rock of Ages, hymn number 242.
church. You all may be seated.
indeed, may we come this morning with open hearts and let God's words touch our lives. It's good to see all of you today, and we want to join together in a time of prayer this morning. We always want to remind ourselves that we are a part of the universal church, the universal body of Christ, and people around the world are worshiping today. Uh, We like to lift up other churches and ministries as we gather here, and so this morning we want to lift up to you um, a free Methodist church called Cristo Le Senta. Sounds to me like Christ has sent or something like that. I'm not sure my Spanish isn't that good, but it's in Brandon, Florida. The pastor is Sergio Peralta, so we want to lift them up and remember them as they are worshiping uh, this morning as well. We do want to remember families um, who've lost loved ones. We want to celebrate some lives this morning. We want to remember the family of Hal Bacon and keep them in our prayers, and also the family of Larry Sherbet and the passing of his mother. So please keep them in your prayers. Um, I invite our ushers to come forward at this time as we prepare for our offering. We want to say a special word of thanks to all of you for your faithfulness in giving to the church. What a blessing. God takes our gifts and our offerings and uses them in marvelous ways here in the work of the church and touches so many lives and um, blesses uh, so many. So uh, we want to uh, give you an opportunity to give and share. You can give through the offering plates, boxes in the back. You can give through our secure app. You can give through the number that you see on the screen as well. Today is St. Patrick's Day. And so as we begin our prayer time today, I want to begin with the prayer of St. Patrick. I'm not gonna read all of it, but I'm gonna share a part of it today. Then we'll continue to pray and close in our Lord's Prayer. Will you pray with me? I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through belief in the threeness, through confession of the oneness of the creator of creation. I arise today through the strength of Christ's birth with his baptism, through the strength of his crucifixion with his burial, through the strength of his resurrection with his ascension, through the strength of his descent for the judgment of doom. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me and Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, and Christ when I arise. Lord, we thank you for all of your saints who have gone before us. So many, Lord, who we think about in our hearts, but for all those faithful followers of yours today, we think about St. Patrick and his life and Uh, the myriads of people who he brought to know Jesus Christ. May we be encouraged and challenged by his faith. And Lord, bless us as we gather here to worship you in this place. You are our God and we are your people. Thank you for preparing our hearts through this season of Lent and as we approach um, Holy Week and Passion Week. May we again be reminded of the great love that you have for us that you shared with us in your son, Jesus Christ. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would open our ears and our eyes and our hearts to your word this morning as, as John Ed brings the message. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would continue to touch us through prayers and through music and song. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would just let us know that you are here by our side and anoint us with your Holy Spirit. Be with those that are hurting today many sitting right here beside us, going through difficult times, uh, some through physical problems, some who've lost loved ones, some, Lord, who are uh, struggling with illnesses and those, Lord, struggling with finances or relationships, many things, Lord, that burden us and weigh us down. Reach out and touch them and use us, Lord, to be your hands and your feet this day. And bless these, our offerings, our tithes, our gifts, O Lord, use them in an awesome way in the work of your church, as you build and as you grow your kingdom. Oh God, we give you thanks and we give you praise. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now continue through special music as Jared and Jordan lead us.
reading of God's word. Good morning. Before we read the text, have you ever read that passage in the Bible that says, wives submit to husbands? Why are you laughing? That's in the Bible. How about husbands love their wives? Yeah, yeah. Fathers don't provoke their children. Yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about that this Wednesday night. Just giving you a heads up. You may want to be there, especially you men. <laughs> this morning I'm excited because, you know, in the Bible we have John the Baptist, but here at Fraser we have John Ed the Free Methodist, just so you know. Yeah. And actually for Dr. Neil, Dr. J, Mario, John Ed and I, we are the 12th generation since Wesley to come into the Free Methodist Church. And he served this church for 52 years. And we're so thankful that he's gonna be bringing the word. Yeah, one more time. So let's read our text today. Colossians chapter three, verses five through 17. It says, put to death therefore what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these, you too once walked when you were living in them. But now, you must put on or put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another. See that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek or Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And I want to thank you for the privilege of being here today as a free Methodist. Somebody asked me this week, was I there when this denomination was organized? <laughs> Not quite, but I was back closer probably than anybody else here. Uh, you know, birthdays come around, I have one coming up. In fact, I just discovered my candles for this birthday cost more than the cake did. <laughs> And let me tell you about age. If you ever hear an 85-year-old man saying he was doing everything he could do when he was 65, he wasn't doing very much. <laughs> but it is good to still be on top of the grass. And what a delight to be here and to serve with this uh, marvelous group of people. The best thing that happened in this church in a long time was when the bishop sent Chris here. And the, what he has done and what he is doing, I love hearing him preach he has elevated preaching for the last 75 years in this church. I'm not here a lot of times. Uh, always good. I enjoy Wednesday nights. Let me encourage you to be there. What did you say? Wives, submit to your husband. Lynn. Oh. <laughs> but I think you also said something about husband loving your wives as Christ loved the church. But uh, I hope that uh, you will be here. Those are great times together. Now, you have an outline in your bulletin. If you'll please take it and follow it. 
my son always told me, Dad, I love it when you have an outline. I said, you do? He said, yeah, I can look at that and tell about how long it's going to be before you're through. <laughs> so you can take that and follow it along, but I'm going to ask you at the bottom of it, uh, my ministry has taken sort of a different and a much more productive direction with digital and the internet. And at the bottom there, you see a QR code. And you can take that, and if you just take a picture of it with your smartphone, and then you can have an opportunity if you sign up there. Three basic things you can sign up for in the morning, Monday morning, early. You'll have an opportunity to hear a 58-second thought for the day. It's on multiple radio stations, but it's easier to get from Instagram or from uh, Facebook. And then a little later, you can get a Got a Minute video. My friend said it's got a minute, but you ought to call it got it a minute and a half because sometimes it's not has to be timed. So you can see that. Every Wednesday I do a blog which goes out to multiple uh, newspapers. And if you take it, you can sign up for it. Now the great thing about these are that if you don't like what you get, you can hit one other button and delete all of it and you haven't got a fool with it. Now you don't have that option this morning with, with me. But thank you for being here. I'll tell you, Chris, I meant to tell you, one thing we used to do on rainy Sundays like today, everybody that came, we counted it as a baptism because they got sprinkled <laughs> coming in. And that always, that always helped. But you have an outline, you have the scripture that was read to you, and what I'm going to do, this is a part of the series from Colossians, and today my assignment was the third chapter of Colossians 15 through 17. Now one thing I like about Chris I've never seen before. I've never seen anybody preach and have five points, and the second point had ten points, and the third had another eight points, and another one had ten. So that's what I did today. I'm trying to be like you, brother. So they got a lot of points, and you'll just have to sort of follow along, maybe underline there. And Father, may the words of my mouth, more importantly, the meditations of the hearts of each other be acceptable in your sight. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, today we look at the master's makeover. The master's makeover. Makeover is a big term that's being used today. If you, our sister community, Wetumpka, just a few miles away, they had the homemaker's makeover come to Wetumpka. They redid about six houses and then they did about seven stores downtown remade, made over the facade, and it's made a huge difference in a small town. It's increased tourism tremendously. People go there now just to see the makeovers. My good friend Jerry Willis, who is the mayor there, by the way, he does the music at the Methodist Church in Wetumpka, and sometimes I help him with that. He has difficulty. <laughs> but as a mayor, hey, I asked him this week, I said, has it had any economic impact? He said, on this year's budget, it's about $6 million better than it was before the makeover. Makeovers are important. Lynn and I got married 28 years ago. We decided she had a house, I had a house, where should we live? She said, let's live in your house. I said, well, that'd be fine. She said, do you mind if I do a couple of things? <laughs> I didn't know what a couple meant to start with. And so I said, sure. And she came in and did a makeover. I had a couple of friends come a couple of months later, and when they walked in, they looked around and said, Johnny, I didn't realize you had moved. <laughs> Let me tell you, a makeover can change the appearance and the value of anything. Sometimes uh, we look at different areas uh, in politics. Just recently, you saw this past week, a picture by Kate Middleton. It was a picture of a family, and everybody looked at it, but then they realized it was a makeover. It wasn't for real. Makeovers can have a tremendous impact. But now the most important makeover is not the makeover of a body. It's not the makeover of a face. It's not the makeover of a house or a community. The most important makeover is the makeover of my life and your life. And God wants to do a makeover. I'm going to give you five words that you can follow along and write in. Now, these are five action words. Makeovers are action. A makeover isn't something you just sit and look at and think about and analyze. It's something that you do something about. And these five verbs all are action verbs. 
The first thing you see in verses 5 and 6, it is the word I used to die. He said, put to death what is earthly in your sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness. On account of all of these, the wrath of God is coming. So you see there are six things you need to die to. And it doesn't just say improve in this area. He says you need to put to death. Put it to death. Let me ask you a question. If you're sitting in your den and all of a sudden look down and see a rattlesnake there, what are you going to do? Maybe you could hit him and stun him. And if he's stunned, you don't just sit there and say, well, that took care of that. I'm going to go ahead and watch TV. Uh-uh. You don't know when he's going to get out of that stunned state and all of a sudden continue what he intended to do to start with. Let me tell you about sin. When it talks about sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, that's more dangerous than any rattlesnake in your house. And it's not here for just to get stunned. It's to put to death. In everything we do, may we put to death. Now, the church doesn't like to talk about this many times. Culture today runs opposite to what this verse says. Culture tells us that you've got a freedom, you can take your decisions, you do what you want to do. That's not what this word says. And one thing that's missing in the church today is the study specifically of what God's word teaches and applying it. The church is called to be the salt of the earth. But let me tell you, the church will never be the salt of the earth if it sugarcoats the gospel. Amen. Let me say that about our church as we move forward. It's easy in today's culture to back down and say, well, hey, that's not that important. If the church is going to be the salt of the earth, it cannot sugarcoat the gospel. Die to that. Now look at the result. It says it's the wrath of God. Do we want to see the wrath of God? then die to this. Now the second word, verses 7 through 9, I just called it discard. Once something is dead, discard it. Look what he said. Now you used to walk in this way, but now you must put them all away. Let me just give you a little interesting thing. All of these sins that are mentioned in that first point, if you don't put them away, they'll come back. For example, that snake... If you kill it, don't leave it in the den. Throw it away, discard it. When you make a decision to make a choice in one of these, now this one has about eight or nine points here. I want you to follow them carefully. It's anger, it's wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk, lying. These all you must put away, discard them. If you want a makeover, you don't just die to these things, but you discard all of that. Anger. That's a tremendous problem today. Let me remind you, anger is just one letter short of danger. And you see it in sports, you see it in politics, you see it in business. Anger is something that must be killed and done away with. Let me just mention one other thing. It says obscene talk. Uh, the University of Alabama has a new football coach, Kalen DeBoer. Interestingly, in sports talk, since he became the head coach, the most important topic talked about is that people said he doesn't cuss. He doesn't cuss. Now, I admire that. And people began to say, well, if you're a coach, it's all right to cuss. You got to. That's part of the language of being a coach. No, it's not. The foul language that's used... You see this beautiful balcony over here on this side? Several years ago, we wanted to expand the sanctuary, and the overall picture was less. That back to, used to cover just as many people as this one. And we added about a, almost 500 seats up there. And I'll never forget when that was walled off, and they were doing the work up there. A carpenter said to me one day, he said, Preacher, this is the hardest place I've ever worked. He said, every time I hit my finger or something goes wrong, I can't say anything. Now, let me tell you, a football coach I admire. I do a lot of times with football and basketball coaches. I love coaches. But obscene language 
obscene talk, there's just no place for it. Somebody said it's okay for coaches to do it. No, it's not. It's not okay if you're a coach. You might say, well, if you're a businessman, it's okay. It's not okay to cuss. Now, realize I'm using the term cuss. I think we all know what that means. Now, there are a lot of other words you can use for it. But that's the word that's being used with a football coach. He doesn't cuss. Let me tell you, there's no place. I don't care if the referees miss a call. It's not okay to cuss. I don't care if we get cheated out of something. There's no way to cuss. I don't care if we hit our fingers. There's no place for cussing. It's not okay just because you get caught in traffic and somebody doesn't go through the light when it turns green. It's never okay. If I understand this correctly, the idea is that it must be discarded. I thought about some other coaches. An article had just appeared, Gus Malzahn. They said they never heard him cuss. And I know a lot of coaches that don't cuss. I think it ought to become the standard of what coaching is really about rather than it's just okay. We've got a coach here in town, several of them, but one I've seen and the people that are around him verify the fact he's head basketball coach at Faulkner. His dad was Wimp Sanderson. And I don't know where he learned not to cuss. Might not have been at home probably. <laughs> but, but let me tell you, Scott Sanderson, people who play golf with him and do everything, have never heard him use a cuss word. So let me just say, first you've got to die to it. Then you've got to discard it. And then thirdly, you have to declare. Look at verses 10 and 11. Put on the new self and be conformed to the image of its creator. Here there's no Greek or Jew or circumcised or uncircumcised, no barbarian or Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is in all and in all. Declare, declare that Christ is in all. You heard the prayer from St. Patrick today that Neil prayed. Christ everywhere, Jesus here, there, up, down, in, out, right, left. Christ is all in all. Let me focus for just a minute on one of those, the image of the creator. When people see you, do they think of God? Do they think when they see you, is it the image of the creator? The Camellia Bowl is a big event here in Montgomery. Uh, we had, uh, and I'm on the sports commission, and there's a huge banquet where you honor some legend. And this year at the Camellia Bowl, we honored one of the great orthopedic surgeons, Dr. James Andrews. And Dr. Andrews was honored there. Uh, he's a uh, doc for a lot of colleges, a lot of high schools. In fact, he told me, I was there and just happened to have this picture made with him. His wife, now get this, last year his wife went to 55 football games and sat up in the stands while he was on the field tending to people that might be hurt. Now that's a lot of football. I like football, but that's about three or four years worth for me. But, but that, and, and they honored him. Let me tell you what happened interestingly. Uh, the, when the Camellia Bowl was played, I was there, and I had a pass to get down on the field, and I was there, and um, th this coach came up to me, and he said, uh, Reverend, can I have my picture made with you? And I looked around. I thought it was one of my friends playing a joke on me somewhere. I didn't see him, and he said, he said, let me just get a picture. And he gave the camera to somebody, and I stood there with him. And he said, now, while we're taking the picture, can I ask you a couple of questions? He said, this new kind of hip surgery that you're doing and this kind of knee surgery that you're doing. And I said, hey, you got me mixed up. <laughs> you're talking about Dr. Andrews. Oh, aren't you Dr. Andrews? I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> and, uh, but he thought I was misrepresenting. He didn't know who I really was. Let me tell you what happened that same day. I left the Camellia Bowl football game, went to Publix, was in the grocery store. I was walking down an aisle. My grandson plays football at the Naval Academy. He gave me a Navy cat, a cap, so I had it on. And when I did, let me tell you, an elderly man was walking down the aisle and he looked over at me and he said, thank you for your service, sir. <laughs> Again, I thought it was somebody, I, I looked around. And I said, sir, I wasn't in the service. He said, oh, I'm sorry. 
He said, I just saw you cap. Now get this, honest truth. He said, I thought you were in the Navy and I figured you were a Navy SEAL. <laughs> now let, let me tell you something. Do you think I get mistaken for that? I want to be mistaken for somebody who is imitating the Creator. Now let me mention the fourth thing quickly. If you discard and then you declare, then he says you got to get dressed properly. Dress properly. Put on then, beloved. Now here's another 10, 11 points. Uh, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, bearing with one another, forgiving each other. And above all of these, put on love and let the peace of Christ. That's a great way to get dressed. Listen, if you die to something and then you discard it, and then you declare who you are, then he said you got to get dressed properly. This is St. Patrick's Day. My kids gave me a tennis tie, and I wore it because it happens to be green. It's sort of proper. You know, we have proper dress. I'm delighted today just to be wearing a sport coat. Let me tell you, in the last two weeks, follow me, the last two weeks, I've been in different religious settings. And every one of them required a different dress. Two weeks ago, I was preaching out at the Christ Church Anglican, which is out on the, uh, out on the main road. They, they just bought all the property next to them, uh, the homes and gardens property. Great thing. Now, let me tell you, they said, when the pastor invited me, he said, now, uh, do you have a Cossack and an arm? I said, a what? He said, you don't, do you? He said, now, let me tell you how we dress for worship. When you come to preach, this was two weeks ago. And he said, you better come around 8.15 because service is at 9.30. It may take a while to dress you. <laughs> let me tell you, I went, I had never seen as much dress. I mean, I got in there early, and the first thing they do is they put a white cassock arm around it. It's a white, it's a white robe, and it goes around. It has uh, a place where you tie it. And he told me, he said, there's a secret pocket right here. And I don't know what a priest does with a secret pocket <laughs> right there. But he said, you can put your microphone in, in there. And then after that, they put on a stove. Then after that, they put on that uh, purple. It's a tunisco. And they put it on. And let me tell you something. It's like a poncho. Now, you're talking about hot. <laughs> they don't need any heat in that church as far as the pulpit's concerned. <laughs> And I dressed up, and they said, now you need to, to, to kneel at certain times. Are you capable of kneeling at your age? I said, it won't be a problem for me to kneel except all of this stuff I got on. I don't know if I can, I can get over with it or not. But, but that's the way they dress. And it was a marvelous, let me just say, that's some great, great church. And I'm just so pleased to be a part of a ministering town of which they're a part. And then last Sunday, I preached in Auburn. Wasn't supposed to be doing that a couple of months ago, but I, I preached in Auburn at the Christ Methodist Church. Now, it's being held in a gym. And in that gym, which is the Lee Scott Academy, let me tell you, it's very casual. Now, the choir wore robes. As you can tell there, I was dressed comfortably, just a sports shirt. Now, let me tell you, that's two weeks in a row. One with more robes than I've ever seen, and the next week just as casual as you can be. And then this past week, Will Adams worked with me. I've been invited to do for donation, which is a, a big uh, hunting program for deer hunting. They conclude everyone with a devotional thought. They said, would you do that for the end of each of them? They're carried on ABC and the Sportsman's Channel, and they'll be shown later this year. Now, I wasn't really dressed properly here. This was a deer hunting show. First question was, well, where's your camouflage? Well, I don't have any camouflage. But let me tell you, we need to be able to know where it is and to dress and to dress appropriately. And then the last thing is the word develop. Now get me, you die and then you discard everything. Then you declare who you are and then you dress appropriately. Now get this. A makeover doesn't end. It continues. You have to be constantly developing. Look what he says. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. Singing. Uh, you hear that? Now, that's singing. I'm, 
I've never heard an offer to sing here in, in this church. By the way, Dr. Jeff Coat, was that AI generated his voice this morning? Because <laughs> I, I didn't know he could sing like that. But he says here, you're singing. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord, always giving thanks. Can I say to you about the Christian faith? It's like a bicycle. If you ever stop, you're going to fall off. Some people say, well, look, I've got it now. We have to be constantly developing and grow in the Christian faith. If we don't grow, we're gone. As most of you know, uh, March the 4th was a defining day for me. I wrote an article about it. It's, uh, you've got, I think, the website there. If you want to go back and read it, I've had more response, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of response about me and why I made the decision I made and where I am today is a free Methodist. I got a, more notes from people of all denominations, but one from a Baptist preacher here in town, Kenny Holmes. He's on the staff now at First Baptist. And he wrote and he said, John Ed, praying for you. And then he made an interesting statement. He said, this was a great day to do what you did. And he said, March the 4th is the only day commanded. I'm praying for you. Well, I read that and said, the only day commanded. I thought, is that one of the commandments? Maybe I missed one. Or maybe I missed something in the Bible. And I start, it took me about five minutes to sit there and think. And then it said, March 4th. Fourth, March 4th. And I thought that's a good word. Because if we're not marching, that means you're intentional and you're energetic. And that means you're going forward, then you're in trouble. We march forth. And I think that's a good way. You see, that's what developing is. It's when we march forth. I want to be like Joshua and Caleb. They came back and they said, yeah, that place is occupied by giants, but our God is bigger than the giants. Then what did he say? Let's go forward and take the land. Let me tell you, as a church, I'm delighted to be a part of Fraser. Your staff here, the people here, you're in a mode of let's march forth. We want to go forward. And Jesus calls us to take risks. Let me say to you now, Sometimes a lot of churches, and I go in a lot of them, are just sitting around hoping, well, hope we get lucky. Can I tell you, there's no such thing as luck. You know, this is a season of the year. You go out in the backyard and look in clovers, try to find a four-leaf clover. And what's a four-leaf clover supposed to be? Good luck? Let me tell you, doors opening all the time in front of us. Many of us don't see open doors because we're out in the backyard looking for a four-leaf clover. And it's the people who are marching forth that God puts his seal upon and causes them to grow. Look what he says. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. Always do everything, everything in the name of the Lord. March forth. Let me paraphrase my good friend Derek Johnson. To paraphrase him, marching forth, if you do that, Good things happen and bad things happen. But if you don't march forth, nothing happens. And I want to continue to be a part of a church. And I want to be a part of a makeover process that's moving forward. And every day, every day grows brighter. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. And it's in that name that we move forward. I love this passage. I was overwhelmed by it when Chris gave it to me. So these five words, they're action words. You've got to die to these sinful things. You've got to discard them and get them out of the way. You've got to then declare that Christ is all and in all. And then we've got to get dressed appropriately. And he gives us the garments that we need to put on. Then we need to develop every day. Let me just conclude with this question. Are you more like Christ today than you were last year this time? Are you more like Christ now than any time in the past? God can do a makeover 
And when he does, <laughs> it becomes the greatest thing that there is in life. Father, make over my life, my family, my church family. May the makeover continue. We see what happened over in Wetumpka. And, oh, God, we see what happened in the lives of people. And, oh, God, you can make over anybody. You can make change anybody, anytime, anywhere from anything. May we experience it, and may we march forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Church, would you stand as we close with Give Thanks. I so enjoyed this passage of scripture. There's so much in here to, for us to apply and I really appreciate John Ed and his words of wisdom for us this morning and as I was listening and kind of soaking it in, this image came to me and I really like to think about things in image like Jesus did with his parables but of our sin popping up and we're just, we're just like playing whack-a-mole with it. Have you ever played whack-a-mole and it just pops up and you hit it, it pops up and you hit it and the challenge in this verse, in this scripture I believe is to stop focusing so much on whacking the whack-a-moles, on hitting the sin, and to actually just come and be transformed. To come and just not question like, how far can I get before it's sin? How close can I get before it's sin? But actually, how close can I get to the Savior? How much of his word can I know to be transformed from the inside out? And you know what happens when you do that? You go behind the whack-a-mole machine and you unplug it. It takes away the power of sin, amen? Will you receive this benediction before we go? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord turn his face upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and march on. Amen.